So what's up you guys, how's everybody doing? Um, <clears throat> so this video is just going to be me talking about how my Tahoe did on the road trip. Because I'm sure some people want to ask, some people want to know, you know, how does it do on a six hour drive, about 400 miles one way with 35s, uh, no cats, not tuned, long tubes, the whole shebang. So that's what I'm here to tell you. So, uh, vehicle in question and I apologize for the train it's just really bad timing every time I try to do this stuff but anyway uh, vehicle in question is my 06 Tahoe I'm going to briefly talk about some of the things that would have, would have something to do with uh, how it would drive and fuel mileage and stuff so it's got 24 by 10 replica LTZ wheels it's got 35 by 12 and a half uh, high to mud champs uh, six inch rough country lift it has uh, pace setter, inch and three quarter long tube headers, no cats, and a three inch MBRP cat back exhaust. Um, the reason I bring up the lift and all that is because the taller you make something, the more drag it's gonna have. Um, and the tires, obviously, they weigh more than the factory ones do. So you're gonna be pulling around more weight and that will suffer because that is a lot of parasitic drag that you're gonna have to deal with. And Another thing, uh, I don't have this re-geared for these wheels and tires, so it's still on the think the 355 rear gear ratios that I think it has already. I don't know if it's 355 or 373. I'm 90% sure it's 355 because I looked up the RPO code before. Uh, <clears throat> I only use 87 octane in this because it's not tuned, and there's no reason for me to put premium in it just yet. So I use regular 87. Uh, I drove 974 miles, so that's about 400 miles both ways, and that also includes me just driving around where I was uh, doing vacation stuff, like going and doing stuff, uh, like go-karting and eating and stuff like that, so that plays into the mileage, but I changed the oil before I left. Um, I use just regular uh, synthetic motor oil for higher mileage engines. That's uh, 5W30. Uh, six quarts. I think I used... Uh, I actually don't remember what I used. I think it was Shell, maybe. I can't remember. It was something. I just know it was... It wasn't a really cheap brand. But anyways. Uh, so, how did it do? Well, aside from the wheels not being balanced, which they need to be balanced, uh, and the front suspension slash steering and alignment being fucked up that probably would help if it was fixed uh it was a handful to drive especially when the roads got uneven and they were shitty uh it was a really big chore to keep it in one lane because it likes to wander back and forth uh there's way too much positive camber on this wheel so and that's just because i don't think there's any more adjustment left so the wheel can't be pulled in to fix it and the toe is messed up so it's very sensitive to input. So if you try to do this, it will start to dart back and forth. Uh, if you hit a bump, it will dart back and forth on the steering with the steering wheel. Uh, and that will wear out the tires. So I'm gonna rotate the tires when I get them balanced. <clears throat> but um, sitting up high is not a big deal. I mean, when it gets windy, you feel it. Um, I didn't really have any issues with the wind. It was windy a few times, but it wasn't a big deal. I uh, went to Myrtle Beach, for those that are going to ask. Uh, I made this video earlier today, but I didn't put, you know, I figured I'd say stuff about the gearing and the transmission and stuff like that, so I'm just remaking it. Um, but the transmission is still the same 4L60 that it came with when it was new. Uh, I haven't upgraded it, doesn't have a shift kit, nothing like that. The gearing is still the same, like I just said a minute ago. Uh, there's really nothing else. And then, I mean, I was carrying me, my fiance and her daughter and all of our shit in the back so i don't know how much extra weight that adds but it adds a few couple hundred pounds um so that's the kind of stuff you need to think about and i did fill up quite a few times with this so that's another thing you need to think about if you're going to go on vacation and you have a vehicle like this if you have something that's like if you have a stock tahoe like if you and your fiance girlfriend wife husband whatever if one of y'all has a lifted vehicle like this and the other one has just a regular factory uh vehicle take the factory vehicle you'll save on gas you may not think so but i can promise you you will 
uh, because I know I spent at least two to three hundred dollars on gas, and that's just a rough estimate. Uh, just because this is this is lifted, like I said, so and apparently when people do window tent, they can't put shit back like they're supposed to. Um, but for the most part, it did okay. And just realize also, your ve if your vehicle's lift <coughs> lifted. You're not going to be able to fit in a parking garage like I couldn't. I had to go below deck instead of sitting where everybody else was because I couldn't fit. So I don't know how tall this Tahoe actually is, but I just know it's six inches taller than it was. And then the 35s lifted even taller. So, yeah. But all in all, it did okay. Uh, I need to fix the front end, so I'm going to be buying the control arms and all that to fix that. So... Uh, the steering, I do have the steering stabilizer on it from Rough Country. It did, it, it started to help at first, but it's not really doing very much anymore. So it's kind of a white, it's kind of a waste of 50 or nine or a hundred bucks. Cause if you get the V2 one, like I did just to match the shocks, it's a hundred bucks. But if you get just a regular N2, uh, steering stabilizer, it's 50 bucks. Uh, it's not really worth it. It didn't really seem to make a difference. So these big wheels and tires they overpower it so it's not even a reward it's not even worth spending the money on i want to buy a new a steering box uh it's the red top steering boxes i don't know what the company's called but i want to buy one of those um and then i just need to get it realigned again for the third time maybe somebody will be able to align it the right the right way when i fix everything and like that's the other thing that bothers me is the dealership i took it to to get aligned they could have told me hey We've done as much as we can. It's still not 100%. But they obviously didn't want to fucking do that. So I guess I'll make sure that they tell me I'm going to road test it before I leave. Because I know they didn't road test it. So I'll go drive it. And then I'll come back and say it's still not straight. Still not driving straight. Because when I went and got it aligned last time at the dealership, the steering wheel wasn't even straight. So that should tell you that they didn't road test it. But anyway... Other than that, it did okay. It did all right. I mean, I, I still got stuff to fix if I'm going to take it on another trip like that. But there's some other stuff I want to do before I go and do that again. So, um, but then an update. <coughs> uh, Tahoe's not going anywhere. But here in the next few months, the Fusion might be going bye-bye. I might be getting something else to replace it. I'm not going to say what it is. I'll just say it may be something fast or it might be a truck. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to leave it as. I'm not going to give any kind of hints. Nobody that watches my videos knows me at all, so there's no way you could guess what I'm going to get. Unless you're smart and you pick up on clues and you know what I like, then you'll be able to figure it out. But 90% of the people I know on YouTube that watch my stuff, y'all don't know who I am personally. So I don't have to worry about anybody guessing. You're more than welcome to guess, but you won't know until the day of. So anyways, uh, and there's also a recall out for that car, which makes me scared to drive it. So that's good to know. But anyways... Other than that, that's all I got for you guys today. Uh, I'm also getting the windshield tinted Monday. I just forgot next Monday. Uh, so I'll have to get the windshield retinted again, but that's only about 20 bucks. And then I'm going to go and get the rear windows retinted or get tint put on top of them. So on top of the 5% I have on the front windows, I'll probably get 15% put on top of this rear stuff. So that way you can't see inside of my vehicle at all. Or I'll probably just get 5 put on top of it because the rear... For those that aren't, are not aware, at least in Georgia, the rear doesn't matter on a, an SUV. I can have the back damn near where you can't see in it, period, unless you're actually in the vehicle. But the front two windows, they're kind of picky about that. But anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll give you updates when they happen. So I'll see you guys later.